Check engine light flashing. RPM going crazy. Wait to start light flashing. Okay, so here you can see the wait to start light flashing. Uh, this is the symptom that I'm having. The uh, tachometer also seems to be bouncing a bit, as well as my as well as my check engine light is flashing at the same time. So something I believe is a problem with the relay, but I'll go through the diagnostic procedures here and figure what the problem is. Um, this wait to start light will flash as well as the relay. You can hear clicking very quickly, uh, almost in unison with uh, the flashing of that wait to start light as well as that check engine light. So I'll take you through this problem and hopefully I can fix it. I'll just, uh, I'll wait until this light goes out so you can see. Eventually the relay does click on, the grid heaters kick on, and then, uh, and then, you know, it'll work fine once it's up to temperature. So it's, it's kind of odd. So when I, when I cycle the key, the grid heaters don't go at all. Uh, you know, they won't even turn on. All right, so it seems to be getting more and more common. Uh, after I start the truck, the, uh, the tachometer doesn't want to work. The check engine light flashes. The uh, alternator, the voltage looks like it's reading 12, so it, it says it's not charging. So I'm gonna confirm next time I start it up um, whether or not it's actually charging, but it takes like a minute, sometimes two minutes, and then as soon as that flashes off, the wait to start flashes off, it goes back to uh, it goes back to a charging voltage. So right now it's sitting at like just beneath 12 volts. And we'll give this a sec to do its thing. And uh, once it's done doing its thing, it goes back to a charging voltage. Right there. So now everything's back to uh, normal, I guess you could say. And this seems to be doing it uh, more and more now and not just the cold temperatures. So I just drove somewhere, Canadian Tire, and I'm back now from shopping for five minutes and then it just did that again. So it seems to be getting worse. Wait to start light is staying on. I don't have any RPM on my tachometer and my charging or my alternator is not charging. I'm sitting at like 11 volts. All right, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the oven's garage. Uh, today I'm gonna be showing you how to swap out the PCM in a first gen. So the problem that I'm having in my red truck is my wait to start light and my water and fuel light are not coming on when I cycle the key. The grid heaters are not coming on. When I start the truck, the tack is not working and the check engine light comes on. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. But the, uh, the alternator is also not charging. Other things that may potentially not be working that I haven't confirmed are the AC. If it was an automatic truck, the overdrive might not work. Um, and I think that was pretty much everything that I've kind of figured out so far. But all of these are symptoms of a PCM going bad because the PCM uh, controls multiple outputs. Uh, I've got a list in front of me that I'll put up on the video as well, but the PCM controls your AC clutch relay, your air intake heater relay, relays, so your, your grid heaters, your alternator field control, so your charging, uh, your ASD relay, your automatic shutdown relay, um, your overdrive indicator lamp, your check engine in indicator lamp, uh, SCI transmit, that's for the DRB scan tool um, that the dealers used or, or mechanics. Uh, speed control, so that's another thing I haven't confirmed, but the uh, cruise control function might not work when I'm having this problem. Um, the tachometer as well, like I said, didn't work. And water and fuel and wait to start indicator lamp. Th those are all controlled by the factory PCM. So if you're having problems with multiple of those issues at the same time, chances are your PCM is has gone bad or is going bad. Um, I kind of saw my PCM start to lose its life and now it's kind of pretty much gone for good. But initially when I started the truck, I would turn the key on and then in cold conditions, the wait to start light would kind of click very fast and you could hear the relay under the, uh, under the hood click very rapidly. And it would do that sort of for a few minutes and then as soon as it stopped doing its thing the grid heaters 
the, or the relay relay would click and the grid heaters would both engage and then you know your startup procedure would work fine and then you could start the truck and everything would work fine and then now we're at the point where you know i could hold the key in the wait to start position for a long time and it's not going to do anything i i turn it crank it drive the truck and i'm driving without a charge but then 15 minutes later down the road it'll eventually it'll start to do that thing again and then boom the grid heaters will engage and then everything's back to normal so um that's kind of what it's been doing um now it's at the point now where yeah i'll i'll turn it to the wait to start crank it and then the wait to start will stay on while you're driving and you won't have charge you won't have tack uh, and it does that for about 10 minutes and then it'll eventually maybe um get back to a normal state but what I'm going to do, my plan, luckily, because I have two of the, I have two of the same truck, is I'm going to swap the PCM out of a known working truck, so old blue, into the red truck, and then I'll swap the PCM from uh, the red truck into the blue truck and see if it gives old blue the same problems using uh, the red truck's PCM, and then I'll use the known working good PCM from old blue in the red truck. So old blue is a 93 automatic, and the red truck is a 92. It was an automatic from the factory, um, but it's a standard now. But the 92 and 93, you can swap the PCM and it shouldn't give me any issues through their plug and play. So I'll show you how to swap them and we'll see if this solves my problem. All right, so I took the battery out just to get access to the computer. I'm in old blue here. And to take out the PCM, there's one eight millimeter bolt on that side recessed and then there's two eight millimeter bolts on this side there um, that are just recessed on the back of the controller there all right so i took those three bolts out and then this is the 60 pin connector there's one eight millimeter bolt there i got to take out and then that just unplugs all right got the bolt out there i'll just set that aside and here's the pcm so i'll grab the pcm out of the red truck and throw this in the red truck to see if it fixes the problem in the red truck. All right, so I've swapped the PCMs out. Uh, Old Blue's PCM is now in this red truck, so we'll see if it does the startup procedure right. All right, let's see. There we go. So the water and fuel and the wait to start later on. It does its thing. Let's see if it starts up. My tachometer is now working and none of those lights are on. What it's probably doing now is it's post heat cycle, which is why it's showing just under 10 volts there. So I'll let this thing warm up a little bit and then we'll come back and see if it's charging. All right, so now we're sitting at a charging voltage. There, there you can see it's still doing its post heat cycle, which means it's cycling the grid heaters on and off. And so we're sitting at 10, 12, uh, just under 14 volts there and it's charging. So that in itself tells me that there is a issue with Red's PCM. So I'm gonna see if I can fix that. All right, now moment of truth. I've got uh, Red's PCM into Old Blue and we'll see if it gives me the same problems as it did in the Red truck. There we go. So my wait to start and my water and fuel didn't come on. And we'll start the truck and we'll see if the talk works um, and we'll see if we get a charge. So there we go. My wait to start light's staying on, just like it did in the other truck. My tachometer doesn't work, and I don't have a charge. And what I could do is I could probably go for a test drive and see if my overdrive does, uh, doesn't does work. Uh, it'll likely probably not work, because that's one of the symptoms as well as a bad, uh, of a bad PCM, as well as the AC not working. But the AC already didn't work in this truck, so I can't, uh, I can't tell. So there we go, it's not charging. My wait to start light stays on. There's a problem with this PCM, so I'm gonna see if I can try and fix it and show you guys how to fix it. All right guys, so some good news and some bad news. The good news is I diagnosed what the problem is with my truck. Uh, the bad news is it's the PCM. Um, so, you know, it's bad news because it could be a costly fix. You know, I see these PCMs going for hundreds of dollars uh, used and if you try and send one away to get repaired, it's also a few hundred dollars. Um, and it's even more for me 
in Canada, there's not many places to send a PCM to get it, re get it repaired. Mostly uh, those places are, are in the States and it costs hundreds of, hundreds of dollars to ship it there, ship it back, get it repaired. And then the exchange rate, it just becomes, you know, an ex ex exorbitant amount of money, uh, more, mo more money than it's probably worth when these, these old computers are not, I don't think they're overly complicated on the inside. So I'm hoping that I can just dive into it and repair what the issue is. So I'll do that in a separate video. This video, I just wanted to show you uh, the symptoms of a failing PCM and show you, you know, that yes, it is in fact a PCM and it's not um, a separate problem like a bad alternator or a bad uh, crank position sensor. So these are the symptoms of a bad PCM. That's how you change out your PCM. And I'll show you in a separate video, hopefully, how to repair your PCM and reinstall it back in your truck. So thanks for watching guys. Uh, stay tuned for more as I dive deeper into this and see if I can resolve what the root cause of the problem is. Thanks guys. Cheers.